This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. The current and future presidents of the University of West Florida, Dr. Judy Bentz and Dr. Martha Saunders on this edition of Conversations. The University of West Florida has grown into a major asset for Northwest Florida. Much of the credit goes to Dr. Judy Bentz, the current president of the university, a role she has held since 2008. In January of 2017, Dr. Bentz will pass the leadership duties to Dr. Martha Saunders. Dr. Bentz will leave behind an impressive array of accomplishments. Her involvement with UWF spans nearly three decades. In 1980, she established both the UWF Division of Anthropology and Archaeology, as well as the Archaeology Institute, where she served as director for 20 years. As university president, she raised the profile of the school, increased community involvement, and dramatically raised the bar for the university's athletic program. In 2016, UWF kicked off its inaugural football season. When Dr. Martha Saunders takes over, she'll bring her own impressive resume. From 2005 through 2007, she served as chancellor at the University of Wisconsin-Whitewater. And from 2007 to 2012, she was president of the University of Southern Mississippi before returning to the University of West Florida, where she currently serves as provost and executive vice president. Dr. Saunders has a rich history with UWF. In 1984, she began her career at the university as a professor in the Department of Communication Arts. She would eventually become dean of the UWF College of Arts and Sciences. We're delighted to have Dr. Judy Bentz and Dr. Martha Saunders on this edition of Conversations. Thank you both for joining us. Our Thank pleasure. You. What an absolute pleasure. Dr. Bentz, let me begin with you. You decided to hang it up as far as running the school. Step down. Why? Yes. Well, eight years, eight and a half years is a long time, Jeff, and I'm not a spring chicken. <laughs> I came into this as a pretty old chicken, and I'm going out as an older chicken. Uh, but the, the point is, is that uh, I have accomplished almost all of what I set out to do. The things that I didn't can't get done in 20 minutes, you know. <laughs> so uh, I think it's a good time, and besides, we have Martha Saunders. Right. And uh, it is really not like it's, there's going to be this big revolution or lots of changes. There will be changes, but they will be more in the area of improvements and continuing to uh, uh, grow and develop the university. So it's a good time. I still have a little gas left in the tank. I got some things undone. <laughs> and uh, uh, so uh, it's, it just feels right. Dr. Saunders, why did you want it? Oh, this is a labor of love. Yeah. Uh, you know, as you know, I, I started my career at UWF, uh, had some wonderful opportunities, came up the faculty ranks, uh, became a dean, and, and then had opportunity to go other places, you know, because of, of my experiences here, learn other things, and then to come back. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I couldn't have made that happen. I think it was one of those meant to be things. Mm -hmm. And to get to come back to where I made my start and come full circle. Uh, and then to pick up the leadership after Dr. Benz. It's, it's, it's a very compelling opportunity. The two of you worked together as professors, right? Oh, we did, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. So, so, so tell, tell me about that. We, we were talking <laughs> in the green room before the show a little bit about your relationship as professors. Well, Martha was a little bit ahead of me in the academic world and was uh, a dean of arts and sciences when I wanted to be the chairman of, of anthropology. And of course, I wanted it right now. I thought I'd earn it and I went to see her in her office and I said, you know, Dean Saunders, um, I think it's time. Uh, and she said, it could be time, but no, you can't be chair. <laughs> and I said, well, why not? And she told me why. And uh, I, I repeat this many times about Martha. She may tell you no, but she will tell you how to get to yes. Uh -huh. And I did what it took to get to yes. She was right. <laughs> and uh, when I got there, she said, yes, you can now be chair. <laughs> you basically have to you serve a chairman, serves at the pleasure of the faculty and the dean. And either one of them, if they are not in harmony, uh, you can't be a chair. <laughs> and so I just had to get, do a little harmony. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and, and, but I... Martha is fair. She she should be tough, like we all have to be tough, uh, but we but but fair and supportive 
Uh, it, it's very important when you have a professor, you know, that's in mid-career that really wants something, and but they're just not quite where they need to be. But to say no and for me to walk out of that room and be um, uh, comfortable with what what she told me I should do, uh, it was uh, it was the right thing to do. I didn't grumble and complain. I just got to work on what she told me I had to do. Well, that speaks an awful lot of your leadership style. Mm -hmm. well, how would you describe your leadership style? Well, I, I think following on that uh, is when people come to me with bright ideas and I, I often say, I know I'm not the smartest person in the room. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we've got a lot of bright folks mm -hmm. at a university. Mm -hmm. And so they come with an idea and, and to me it's yes till it's no. Mm -hmm. You know, and then if, if I can't say yes, then I say, well, let's talk about what it would take uh, to get what you want mm -hmm. uh, and still uh, make sure the university or whatever the unit is is moving straight. What made you want to move out of the day-to-day -day professor role into more of a leadership role? You know, I often say every job I've ever had at a university I've loved. Mm -hmm. When I was a faculty member, I, uh, I thought I could do this every day until I die and I'm going to die happy. Uh, and then I got an opportunity to be an honors director and I thought, well, this is cool, so I'll do this every day until I die, and I'll die happy. <laughs> and I think it was more, nice. it wasn't that I was looking for opportunities, but doors would open, and I'm always, a, I'm a curious person, right. and so an opportunity <laughs> would, mm -hmm. like, you know, the person sitting next to me, and I'd say, well, let's go try that. Uh, and so it wasn't so much seeking it, it's just the opportunity came, and I tried it, and I thought, Gee, I love this. I could die happy doing this, yeah, and yeah. so and so it goes. Yeah. Well, and 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 Dr. Benz, you I mean, did you was that one long-term goal for you? Never, to become ever, president? Jeff. No. Never. No. <laughs> it never crossed my mind. I was doing cutting-edge research in Veracruz, Mexico, <laughs> in tangent conjunction with my research here in the early Spanish period. In, in Pensacola, and I was going back and forth about once a month to the project down there. And I was on my fifth or sixth trip, you know, and I was tired and it was hot. And I got on the plane and I, uh, I realized that President Kavanaugh said that he was going to, to leave and uh, time was short. And I thought, oh, now I have to break in a new president. They don't understand what archaeology really is and it's different here. And uh, so when I got back, um, the... Um, Deans uh, began to call me and ask me if I would be considered uh, to, for the nine-month position as interim, and I said, absolutely not, <laughs> and I really didn't think twice about saying no. I mean, I really wasn't the most productive part of my career, and, uh, but to make a long story short, I did agree to be considered uh, to serve for nine months. Eight and a half years ago. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Once you were in the position, did you just find, yeah, I like this? Well, I really, it was very difficult at first. The first nine months was when the recession hit in right. 2008 to 9. And it was just terrible. Everybody was afraid. Everybody was nervous. The whole country was. Right. And one of the things that I, I can do is I can deal with crises and just calm down, we're going to get through this, this is absolutely terrible, nobody knows the way out, we've got a lot of smart people, and we're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Just calming people down, we're not going to close the university, we're not going to fire everybody, right. and it was some bad decisions were made at other institutions where that did happen. Uh, so uh, that I kind of uh, jumped in when there was a, a, a serious need for leadership. And then, of course, they didn't do a search. Who are you going to get in the middle of a recession? And Florida's got the worst housing problem. So the, the whole point of this is, is no, I never thought I would do it. But when I did get it, there were some serious problems that needed to be dealt with. And because I was dealing with them and the university was doing all right, um, they asked me to extend. And I said, all right. And then they still didn't do a search. And one thing led to another, and I was forbidden is the wrong word. I was not eligible to apply uh, to for the presidency and K.C. Clark was our board chair and K.C. went to the Board of Governors and said, I know she can't apply but can we offer her the position? And they said, well, yes, you can. <laughs> and we'll waive the national search because they've seen me for two and a half years. And so, uh, but I, I never thought about it, Jeff. It never crossed my mind. 
But you truly did raise the profile of the university. I mean, UWF made a major jump from the time yeah. you took over to now. What, what did you do to make that happen? Well, it, it's simple. Martha and I are on the same page with marketing and visibility. You know, uh, we're a culture that uh, if you're out of sight, you're out of mind. You just are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we, as a university, had not been telling people what we had been doing. Right. We had been run and, and existed in kind of a vacuum, uh, like in the old days, in the 50s and the 60s, when it was a, a, a quiet intellectual place, universities were, where they just kept out of the way, kept their head down, and spoke in five syllable words. <laughs> and, and that was fine, because that, we need that in this country yeah. and in the world. Uh, but on the other hand, times changed. Mm -hmm. And you had the University of South Florida, Central Florida, uh, just bopping up. You've got Florida Atlantic. And we wound up being behind with that kind of an attitude. And so I just basically decided that what we really needed was to become visible again. And I, was, I, I did a speech not too long ago, and I showed up. The first thing I did was put up billboards. First in North America, what, what, what have we done for you lately? Mm -hmm. How many volunteer hours do our students do? How many championships have our team won? How many, how many sciences have we produced? How many people in Northwest Florida have a degree from UWF and stay here and are productive members of our society? It's like 35, 40,000. People just didn't know that. Right. And they go, oh, is that right? And I said, yeah, that's right. And then we began to go throughout the state, and our alumni began to see the uh, billboards uh, uh, in Tampa, in Miami, in Tallahassee, in Jacksonville, in Orlando, and they loved it. And the other president said, what are you doing? I said, I'm just showing off. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so basically it was really quite simple, uh, was, was visibility, because we really need a, a university, a regional one in particular, you need help. Uh, and the community is your primary source of help, the community and the legislature. And those two were two of the three buckets that are goals that, that I really had. The other was improve student life. Make this a real university, not a commuter school. And, and what are some of the things that occurred in order to do that? Oh, first thing was dorms. We hadn't built a dorm in forever. We had a surplus in housing that could choke a horse. <laughs> and I said, you know, let's build, my very first month, I said, let's build a new dorm. And I want to build it in a year, because I figured maybe I could get the summer, you know, in addition <laughs> to my nine months. And it was a recession. I said, concrete will never be cheaper. Good point. Mm -hmm. You know, contractors will never be less busy. And it worked. And it, that drew students, because the more students you have on campus or near campus, the more campus and student life you have. And then they said, and then I built another one. And they were big. They weren't these little pizza huts and the, right. or these little two-story <laughs> things that we had. Right. These were big collegiate bricks right. and pl mortar and plaster and, and, and logos on them and, and a pizza joint down below, mm -hmm. uh, a patio or uh, in between the two dorms. That fosters student life. So mm -hmm. that's the first thing I did. Right. And uh, I, I just kept doing it. You know, we built academic buildings, of course. We built wellness buildings for the students. We built a new daycare center, which was really needed. It's not like I had all these ideas, but I just made sure that we did it. Dr. Saunders, what, are, what is your plan moving forward? How, how do you want to piggyback on this? Well, I want to uh, I, I want to crystallize what Dr. Benz has started. Uh, we really do now have the look and feel of a traditional university, and that's very important. And we need to solidify that, make sure it doesn't ever back up or erode. Mm -hmm. But then I also want to, I have some other ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to, uh, a, a, again, as she has started, I want to reduce the number of miles between Pensacola and the University of West Florida. Sometimes people think it's a long way out. Mm -hmm. uh, and create more opportunities for people to come to the campus, the one that's off Nine Mile Road. And, uh, and have more destination sites and more experiences that people will want to be a part of. Uh, I want a stronger presence in the community. And I think we're, we're doing a great job, certainly with the UWF Trust, all of the historic properties. I think we can build on that as well. And then to build some programming for which we will be known. Mm. Uh, we have some wonderful programs at UWF and they, they've gone about as far as they can go with what they've got. Mm -hmm. And I wanna invest in these strong programs um, 
give them the huge visibility and take them to the moon. What are some of those programs where you feel would? Well, you know, we, we would still uh, have to make go through a selection process to see which ones we're going to put forward. I certainly would expect uh, we have a fairly new cybersecurity program that's huge all over the country. I think that's going to be important. Uh, a number of our sciences are important. Uh, we have a new College of Health, and I could probably go in there and just throw a rock and anything I hit would be the right thing because uh, so much is developing in health care. Right. Uh, we have a very strong logistics and supply train management program. Uh, and these are the kinds of programs where there is a huge market demand, there could be a huge economic impact locally, there are tremendous uh, opportunities for partnerships with industry and good visibility. And like Dr. Ben said, you know, if they don't know about us, it wouldn't be as good as we want, but right. Uh, you know, we, we must be able to have the kind of visibility. So I think that those are some things that we would really be uh, be pushing as we move along. You brought football. You bet. <laughs> you bet. Now that will raise the visibility yep. for sure. Of course, it, that, that's the cherry on top of my little <laughs> stint as, as serving as president. Uh, you know, we did academic first. We did student life first. We did buildings uh, we did a lot of, of, of innovative programming that Martha really has brought as provost and the chief academic officer. But boy, I'll tell you, there's nothing like football. <laughs> and when I decided we were going to have it, we were at a real low point and the economy was still not good. But you know, football is fun. Yeah. It gave me something fun to work on. It gave the university administration something fun to figure out. Every t every place we turned, it was a mess. You couldn't do it this way. You can't do it that way. Yeah. Well, by gosh, we figured it out. Yeah. And it is such a wonderful new dimension of the university. Yeah, it really is. You know, I think what's really interesting, and I, I, I don't guess I really ever thought about it like this, but just, just hearing you talk is you really did take advantage of a situation when, when the economy was yep. down. And, and so many wonderful businesses and great success stories occur when things are down and... and, and Humans. Yeah. That's right. We can yeah. be very creative when we have to be. Yeah. Under pressure, we are at our best. Yeah. I never really thought about that. I'm, I'm glad you shared that story with us. Complacency is deadly. Yeah. What makes a great leader? Mm, vision. Courage. Thick skin, strong stomach. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Seriously. Well, and I'd also add just the ability to recognize a good idea yes. when it sits by you on a bus. Right. You know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I think to be yeah. able to discern among a, a hundred proposals mm -hmm. and say, that one's got legs and that one's got magic and let's right. do that. Right. right. I, w I want to go back to kind of your beginning and we were talking about great programs. Yeah. You have to just be swelling with pride at this stage in the oh, game with man, the archaeology is, program. Oh, it's wonderful. Tell me more. Well, whoever thought we'd find the Luna settlement, whoever thought we'd find three shipwrecks, it is world class. Yeah. And uh, I am just absolutely thrilled that two things happen because of that. Number one, it's, it, it's, we've got exactly the right people in place to, tr to do, I don't have to hire anybody new. Mm -hmm. uh, it, um, the archaeology department doesn't have to hire anybody <laughs> new. And the, the second thing is that there's no pressure on these resources. Yeah. There's no development going in. There's no, no canal going to take out the shipwreck area. It is exactly the way that it should happen. Specialists are in place. They're comfortable. The program is well funded. Everyone trusts us. And now they can just take it to the absolutely level that most scholars never get. Now, what role will you play once you're away from the president? I'm not going to dig the Luna site. We have perfectly good archaeologists to do that. But what I am going to do is um, I, I think that Martha and I have been talking about uh, it would be very important and very few people have the time that are in the ranks to take the, the Luna site and first put it on the National Register of Historic Places, then take it to a National Historic Landmark, and then maybe a World Heritage Site. I think that it is it can qualify. And to have a world heritage, there are only like 
50 in the whole world, like wow. the pyramids and, right. you know, the Parthenon. Right. Uh, but this is, this is good. This, this very well might make the World Heritage Site. America's first settlement. Yes. Wow. There's right. only one. <laughs> That's right. Wow. And, and then also to take that and, and do the downtown colonial historical area to have it on the National Register and then the Presidios in the early 18th. So. Yeah, I, I mean, so the, the possibilities are endless. Yes, they are. Absolutely. Yes. Neat. Tell me about research. Do you want the university to become more involved from a research standpoint? Yes. Uh, we and we and we are. We are already. We've started uh, uh, moving much more assertively toward uh, toward more research for a lot of reasons. The opportunities are there. The, we have the faculty uh, skill set to do that, and I and um, and that is a direction that we are being certainly encouraged to go. Okay. Uh, by the Board of Governors, mm -hmm. and um, that does not take necessarily take away from teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact, most of us would argue that it is uh, because we are good researchers, we are more interesting, <laughs> we have more to share. It enhances teaching. Uh, it right. enhances right. our teaching. Right. Right. Uh, and also, to include our students in our research, we have been developing undergraduate research as a strong component of the undergraduate experience, uh, it's a high impact practice. A student that's worked in a lab side by side mm -hmm. uh, yeah. with uh, a, a 16th century materials, something right. like that, when they get ready to go into the workplace, they, that resume is going right. to pop. Right. Right. So we've been doing a lot of emphasis on high impact practices, whether it is internships, whether it's study abroad, undergraduate research, Finding uh, shipwrecks. Yeah, finding shipwrecks. <laughs> uh, those kinds of things make, uh, set our students apart. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's, that's what we want to have happen. Yeah. Tell me how technology will change education in the coming years. Mm. Oh, well, it will, I can, all I can assure you is it will change it because it has changed it so much in the past. And, uh, you know, I was on the, the faculty committee to examine distance learning mm -hmm. uh, and, and what might happen. And this was many years ago. And we, uh, I did have one old gray beard colleague who said, <laughs> you know, distance learning will be but a blip in the history of higher ed. Yeah. Well, look at yeah. you. 30% of our programming is online now. 30% 30, 30, of our students. 30%. And uh, I think that, it, but it's not the way we originally thought it would be. We thought that, uh, we would be taking uh, one faculty member would teach just wadzo students, you know, right. thousands. Uh, at, but it's very labor intensive uh, because there is a much greater student interaction online than uh, than you would imagine in the classroom, face to face. Often students are reluctant to ask a question. Mm. They don't want to mm -hmm. look dumb. Mm -hmm. They don't want to prolong the class. But online, they're not at all reluctant. And so I think we're going to refine that model. I think we will hybridize it. I think that we, we know it's equally effective and in some cases more effective. So I think we'll see more of it and we'll see it global. We'll see it uh, sent, uh, translated into other languages and, mm -hmm. and uh, spread uh, a long way. Yeah, so the disruption is occurring not just in you know, the, the ordinary marketplace type scenarios we see, but very much in education as well. Well, and it, and it helps us adapt, and it helps our students adapt their education to their lives and us to our students. I have a little less than five minutes left. Dr. Bence, tell yeah. me what you want your legacy to be. Oh, it's already in place. There's nothing I can do about my legacy now. <laughs> How do you want people to remember? What, well, what do you think was the most important thing you did? Well, I, I think there, there are three. And number one is uh, community engagement. I mean, people know the university. They know who the president is. Uh, I, I think that, the, the, like I said, the cherry on top is football. I mean, we don't have to play football. We don't have to play it downtown. Right. But it's wonderful to do that for everyone involved. So I, I think community relations is, is very uh, a big part of my legacy. And uh, the, the next thing is Tallahassee and the legislature. I already had a lot of friends in the legislature, and now the university has more. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so we're very well respected in the, in the legislature now, and that is where most of, our, uh, most of our money comes from. 
And so it is very important that those are, uh, those are solid. So I think those two things were important. And then the, the, the third thing with students, I mean, we got student life. We got, you know, uh, uh, the, the socialization aspect of athletics uh, is very high. And there's, there's what we call Argo pride. Mm -hmm. They're wearing our gear. I mean, I was in the cafeteria the other day this week, and I think about half of the students had some gear on. Yeah. You would never have that. You know, uh, ten years ago. So uh, I think that is is real important. Uh, those are my three uh, things. I hope that are will be considered my legacy. And, and Dr. Saunders, as you look ahead, what are kind of the two or three things that you want to pinpoint? Well, I want to put us on the map. Mm -hmm. uh, we know how good we are. It's time for everybody else to to know it too. So I think we'll be doing a lot of emphasis on visibility. Uh, and, you know, I always have a commitment to leave things better than I found them. Mm -hmm. So you build on the strengths that you have, bring UWF up to its full potential, uh, and, uh, and we'll feel, I want to feel good about handing it off to the next one. Yeah. Just as, as we get ready to close out here, the university has a huge economic impact on this area. How much of an economic impact? The, the last... Uh, state University System uh, study showed we have a 1.4 billion dollar annual impact on our region. 1.4 billion. billion with a That's B. That's four million a day. Wow. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, <clears throat> about half of that, if I'm remembering the study correctly, uh, comes from direct impact jobs. Uh, uh, primary jobs and secondary jobs that we inspire and then the rest is the benefit of having an educated population so mm -hmm. it's a fairly complicated study but uh, it's real and of course the you know our first responsibility to this community is to be a great university right. Right. and good things happen in about 30 seconds dr. Bench what do you do after January I get my life back <laughs> <laughs> I do, uh, but with a smile on my face. Yeah. But we're going to be hearing from you because you're going to be out there right. involved in archaeology right. and doing and, and things. Well, first of all, congratulations on all of your success. Thank you. You're well respected in the community and you've done a phenomenal job. So, I've had a good time too. Yeah, and it shows you have an awful lot of passion. I so do. wish you all the best. Dr. Saunders, we know you're going to take the ball and Here run. Yep. If I may That's use right. a football analogy there. That's right. Looking, looking well. forward to it. Dr. Judy Bentz, who is the current president who will hand off the ball, shall we say, or the baton to Dr. Mm -hmm. Martha Saunders in January of 2017, the presidents of the University of West Florida sure. on this edition of Conversations. By the way, you can see more of our conversations online at wsre.org slash conversations, and we're also on YouTube and Facebook. I'm Jeff Weeks. Thank you so very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Take great care of yourself, and we'll see you soon. Support for this program is provided in part by these corporate sponsors. And by viewers like you.